you I'm are sure. you are yeah. live you are loud Dom. and we're live actually we're live. and we're live, and live. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody welcome welcome to uh welcome to svt time sweet talk yeah uh, yeah this is a, this is as you know we have svt time that you know we talk about gear and stuff and then we have our special sweet talks that we kind of talk specifically about the new SVT suite. So, uh, my, as you know, my name is Dino Monoxilis. I'm my host, my co-host here, Dom Liberati. And today we have actually one of one of SVT, the suite, one of the contributors to one of the presets, Mr. David Curran. David, welcome. What's up, sir. everybody? Uh, happy to be it? here. Thanks for man, coming I, on, man. I'm so mad I don't have sound effects on this keyboard yet, like oh, or like, like a big crowd <laughs> clapping or just gotta add it to the list, add it for next time. <laughs> David, it's oh. awesome to have you, man. No, this is great. Yeah, yeah. Now, David, you're in Nashville, right? I am in Nashville. Cool. So we're kind of all along. Yeah. New Hampshire, Los Angeles, and Nashville. And of course, Aaron behind the scenes is in the UK. So man, it it's I I love technology. I love it's, it and I hate technology. Right? I was gonna say, love and hate for me. <laughs> <Double -edged sword. laughs> but uh, SVT Suite is a perfect example of uh, the love of technology because mm -hmm. you can take you know all these heavy amps, all these heavy cabs, and just have them in your dock Man. magically. It's I was I was literally just telling Dino a story about how I had to bring a giant SVT head and a ten down a ship's hull one time. And, uh, no way. Yeah, That's it was. A, it's a venue in uh, the UK. It's actually a cargo ship, and the load in was legit a just a tiny rickety set of stairs going into the <laughs> ship hull, and we brought it down. So luckily, with the suite, you know, I don't necessarily have to do that anymore. <laughs> I feel like you uh, you can say you've passed like the SVT Olympics because it, I think a right a right everyone has a story. Yeah, a rite of passage is like a regular staircase, if not like the top floor of like some attic club or something. Yeah. But a ship's hull is a new a level. A ship's hull, and I was like, I can't believe this thing is fitting. It's a refrigerator, you know, just going <laughs> down down the stairs. And it's like, we did it, did the show. It was awesome. That's amazing. Ship's hull, uh, fire escapes. I've heard, you know, yes. do fire escapes before. Um, here Hon in Boston. Honda Fits. Honda yeah. Fits, yeah. <laughs> you fit in a Honda Fit. <laughs> um it's incredible yeah, it's crazy so actually if anybody's watching it, either either now or later when you're watching this in a in a in the future broadcast comment um comment in the comments what your craziest loading experience was we want to hear yes you know yeah. i'm oh, sure yeah. there's something that we don't know yet that yeah will top everything i, I want to hear the submarine story you know what i mean yeah, yeah. Gig in the submarine yeah but, Man, that's so cool. Speaking of we have uh, of people, if anyone's watching or not, we got Paul Trainer, who I think has made like every episode. That's right. I love that. Close yep. to every episode. So thank you, From Paul. Liverpool. From yep. Liverpool. From Liverpool. Cheers to you. <laughs> Man. Yeah, cheers. I was going to say cheers, of course. Water. So before we, um, there's, we got a lot of questions to ask, a lot of things to go through. I kind of wanted to talk on this first uh, because I wanted to thank you, David, again. Not only did yeah. David uh, put signature presets into SVT Suite, uh, but you'll see the 50th anniversary SVT is an SVT Suite right here. Oh, yeah. And in real life, mm -hmm. David was the first artist to road test this. Man, and did I ever. I took it through his face. <laughs> and yeah, I will say that uh, So it, he had like a, a development model, uh, like a prototype. And I believe it was like around winter time too. So it was like, it was a really mm -hmm. good test of like on the road in the cold. And there were some oh. issues very, very last minute that he was kind enough to risk knowing that that could be a potential thing that could happen on the road. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like the last thing that got updated and fixed and is now very, very bulletproof for the oh road. My gosh. So I'm, thanks I'm to you, so man. I'm so happy to, you know, it's crazy. I, that just that whole time of like, you know, FaceTiming you guys being like, yeah, I don't, you know, it's like, it was this crazy thing where it was like, we're going to figure this out. And yeah. now that, and now that it's, it's been passed and it's like, you know, that's why we do things like that. It literally was yeah. like, you know, the, the 50th, the 50th anniversary SVT by far, you know, I've played so many, so many different types of Ampex throughout the years. That one 
just completely blew me away. It was, it was this, you know, it came in at the perfect time. We, you know, when, when we met, I was touring with Lauren Daigle, we were starting our world tour arena, like playing arenas. It was like, you know, what better way to like test out the newest SVT than like venues like this, like where it's, you're really putting it through its paces versus, you yeah. know, you can test it in, you know, the, the factories and it's in like nice, cool climate conditions. But when you got random roadies grabbing it and you're, you know, you're playing hours a day, it's like, that's when you really, when it's actually being used is when you really want to yeah. like see how this thing cooks. And man, it was literally the best sounding amp that I've ever played. It was my favorite setup and it was, a, it was an awesome experience. And when it, when you told me about the SVT suite and like what was going to get um, included in it, I was so thrilled that you guys were able to recreate it in a suite, yeah, in a, in a plugin. And I'm telling you, as someone that like was there at the early days of listening to it and now transitioning into, I can throw it in my DAW, and it, it's it's crazy how you guys were able to capture it in a plugin. It's insane. It's an SVT for ants. No, it, uh, it's it, it's kind of cool because you actually did exactly what the Rolling Stones did. Like the the yeah. H uh, the Heritage fiftieth was uh, commemorating that first year that the SVT came out in sixty nine when the Rolling Stones came on their first U.S. tour mm -hmm. and they were road testing it on on the tour. And you literally see in old documentaries like guys like behind the the eight yeah. tent like, throwing up new heads or whatever because the other ones went down so you were uh, glorified the equivalent of that <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was that was a fun time it, it literally um our guitar tech tyler he every time like it was like he just you know he was in charge of a lot of the back line but he always like that tour just i would like check out the stage and i just see him like just literally just spending so much time just playing through it being like dude he just was like i can't believe how great this sounds oh that's awesome it that just was david what's that what cab were you using on that tour so it was the 212 okay i i definitely so you know i um for the for the type of show lauren was doing there was um nope. a it kind of was like this you know we we're everything on that tour we all the sounds you heard we did live um we didn't run tracks for the most part we had a for for things that were that could have been in like ableton um we had an actual uh he a guy named uh diesels he basically was triggering manually playing um on a, one of those pads that has like a million buttons on it he was actually yeah. manually playing every dom got to see us at the a so couple, cool. couple times at the greek and um i forgot there's some other venue in downtown la we did um, yeah, yeah Novo, every, i think something like that yeah like everything we did we wanted to emulate what used to be before and so one of the big things for me walking into that tour for a, a bass player's perspective is you know i still wanted to like you know, I'm still a big proponent, even though everything is moving digitally and things are getting really good on that front. Yeah. I still was like, I still want just an amp and cab with a microphone, you know? And one of the things that I was really particular on was like, I still want to recreate, like have a great blend of like a modern sound with the vintage together. And I felt like that 50th was literally the perfect amp for that tour. You know, I didn't do any big cabs on that on that run. I basically switched from a B15 to um, the SVT sound, and mostly just because we were playing bigger rooms. You know, we mm -hmm. had we all had in ears, but it's something nice having like you can feel the air behind you move a little bit, yeah. especially on like big hollow stages. You need to have a little bit of something. So I'm still like a big proponent of like I will always if an amp and cab are there, I will always use one. Yeah, sure. and it came through in the mix, man. The, the uh, just the rhythm section on that tour was unbelievable. It was, it was definitely it was really fun. But yeah, um, tell us. I, I was gonna say I want to get into like the nuances of your tour rig because I know there's a little bit more than that in the way that you're routing everything. But um, mm -hmm. just for everyone else too, like just um, start out on like your musical background and how you kind of came into bass and 
Yeah. So like, you know, I, I came, I come from a very musical family um, over the holidays, like Christmas Eve, everyone would be playing, um, you know, in the music room and I would just be in there like trying to tinker around. Cause you know, my family, like they, you know, you play, tell them to play a song. They're all just, they're all just playing it by ear, knowing everything. And uh, I was really thrown into that pretty early, even, you know, grew up playing in church, trying to like, just always be wanting to play music. I was in rock, you know, rock bands in high school. I, I wasn't necessarily like in high school, I was the kid that really just, I missed my senior prom because I had a show, you know, I was like that kind of kid. Yeah. Where I was, I, I, we booked a show instead and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'll, I just want to keep playing music. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, you know, my early days, I played everything from, you know, rock gospel, uh, Americana when I was, right out of high school the first like serious band i was in was for like this americana artist and that actually led me my to my first time ever coming to nashville we uh, uh recorded in ricky skaggs studio uh up in hendersonville and just having that you know not coming from a country americana background i you know i never say no to stuff like that i'm like this is a what better way to learn a new mm -hmm. style than to just dive on in and like mm -hmm. understand the nuances of that. So even, even today, 2021, like I'm still in that mindset of like, I'm always open to learning new, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to say I can't do this or can't do that. It's like, you know, I'm going to, I'd rather be, um, you know, the weakest link in the chain because I'll, I'll get stronger from this, from the other people from that, you know, and I'll learn, I'll try to always be a student in those kind of things. Sure. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know if they answered your question, but that. Yeah. No, that's yeah. really cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know you came from a musical family. That's cool. I did. Yeah. Started what, on trombone, though. But. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, yeah. What. um Trombone and saxophone. So I can read treble clef way better than bass clef. Really? I, oh, wow. I, I don't know. I don't know why it just didn't click, click for me with bass clef. But treble, I'm like, I can do it all day. Yeah, and I'm just the opposite. I have. I. And I started on clarinet, but I, I have such a hard time reading treble clef now. Yeah, it's it's something that's weird. Like when I grew up playing in my church, we uh, it was like really classic. It was we had a choir, orchestra. It was sheet music. It was you know very much like old school. And so when I when I would fill in, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a chart of just reading music. And I I literally was like, all, it was all in bass clef. And I was like, okay, I know how to do this, but I'm like, man, I am just so trained to do sure. treble. So oh, yeah, do you do you have to read read a lot for bass? Do you feel like now or is man here? Here it's like it's it's crazy coming. You know, mo I moved to Nashville about four or five years ago, and uh, yeah, it's like either the number system or you just kind of you just kind of know it. Like you just yeah. kind of you listen to the song one time. I always thought it was the craziest experience. You know, getting into my first session in Nashville you know, in years before when I would get booked for a session in Charlotte or somewhere else, like they give you the songs, they give you so much preparation and just really wanting you to be like really solid when it came time to tracking and you, move, you come out here, they don't give you the songs. You don't even know who you're playing for until you yeah. show up. You're like, what, who, like, you know, I don't, you know, it's kind of one of those things where I, I ask them like, what's the vibe? What are we doing? It's so bare minimum. They really want like instincts. Yeah. Yeah. which is great. Like, that's really fun for me. Cause I don't, you know, I'll listen to a song. I'll maybe I'll chart it down pretty quickly and then just go in and not knock out a few takes. And it's like, when you're in that kind of mode, I realize like, Oh, they want like instinct. When you, when you kind of come too prepared, it, sometimes it just feels too forced. But when you show up like an open book, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the best, you know, experiences. So can, What's great is like they're hiring you, knowing that they want your instincts, trusting, yeah, yeah, knowing yeah. That they, yeah, that's really cool. Do you do you feel like you do a pretty even amount of like at home tracking versus studio now, or is it? Yeah, it's surprisingly like it's been uh, mostly from my studio here. You know, it's mm -hmm. you know I feel like music is gravitating in a lot of ways to being recorded from bedrooms. You know, yeah. And, and there are definitely pros and cons. I talk about that sometimes, the pros and cons of, you know, I get it. You know, music is changing, budgets change. Maybe they don't, you know, they can't 
you know, afford like a studio for a week, but we can kind of send all the, all the stems out and we can just kind of collect it all, all together. But, uh, you know, it, it has been really, uh, been really fun just to be able to come up here. I can work and literally the SVT suite has been perfect for that. I'm like not, I'm not just saying it like it's mm-hmm. literally I'll, I will send tracks from here and I'm like, man, these sound just as good as me tracking somewhere in town just because yeah. I can kind of, I have my system here. Um, I utilize the HX stomp and the SVT suite together mm-hmm. to create mm-hmm. like really great amp tones, send them a DI signal and ever it's just, they love it. You know, I never, I'll send them a couple passes and I won't hear back until the song's out. And it's like, Oh, great. Glad you liked yeah, it. I guess you liked it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, guess you liked it. You know? <laughs> well, I've seen a lot of your videos online and, and you outlining, uh, David not only has presets for SVT suite, but also your own signature HX stomp presets, correct? I do. And I, a lot of yeah. that was, um, my years just touring. I, I, I literally the, you know, the day we met, um, was the day that I, this is that stomp, you know, that yeah. it, 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 it was, um, I, I used it that night. I was like, I was just so excited. I just threw it on my board. I was like, no sound check. I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll like quickly figure it out. And just, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm just so excited. And, What's been really cool is kind of we were talking a second ago about, you know, I was wanting to, I'm always wanting to implement the, the, the ways of the, of the old ways of doing things, but then also embracing the new and that the very thing I did was you can still use the HX stomp with an amp. And that's, I did, I did, did that, you know, all of the years of like once this, the HX stomp was on my board, it's never left, stayed in the same spot. You can, my big thing, whether I'm recording from here, I want to utilize all the, you can make it, if you, you know, just take some time, you can make everything just kind of blend really well together. You Mm -hmm. know, I'll use a B15 sound from the, from the HX, and then I'll record my DI channel into the SVT plugin, and then I'll turn that into an SVT sound. So I have this great blend of a B15 and an SVT and kind of EQ, tweak some things and send it, send it as one amp sound and I can, yeah. kind of, you know, dial in or I'll send them just all three separate. But, you know, that's one of my favorite things to do is utilizing all these resources. And, uh, yeah. my, my presets for the stomp came about from me just touring for so long, making sounds as I go. And people were just like, I want your sounds. I want your sounds. I want your sounds. And I was like, I'll, I'll figure it out one day. And then this past year, I just finally made a website and I said, here you go. Yeah, And it's been really cool to see uh, just the response of people just feeling inspired, you know, just playing. I just want people to feel inspired when they play something, you know, in the same way that I was inspired (laughs) when I use the 50th anniversary, when I'm using the plugin, when I'm using the stomp, like it inspires me to like create new things. Man, and what I've heard from those uh, demo videos and everything with the presets, like I don't know how anyone's getting your tracks and like changing anything about them. Like they, they seem so surgically EQ'd that where it's like, it's cutting through the mix, but it's sitting exactly where it needs to. Yeah. It it's, sounds it's, really good. It's my favorite thing is just finding the, it just needs to sit right. You know, it's not about crazy fills or, or all this stuff, but like in the recording world, it's like literally people will hire you just based on, can you make your instruments sit in the mix this way? You know, mm-hmm. you could just be playing whole notes, but if it's the best sounding whole notes in the world, like, yeah. Hired. And to yeah. me, I care more about that now. Like how sonically am I, you know, am I being, am I able to put my instrument where it needs to be? And yeah. I feel like this past year, utilizing the suite, utilizing the stomp and using them together, like it's, I have yet to find a situation where it just doesn't work. Yeah. Now you went into a little bit of detail about like using the B15 and then into the SVT. But I remember when you showed me one day, like what you were doing, it was pretty complicated. Like, do you mind running through that? Yeah. So, um, as far as like how I record for my house uh, or just live setup, like you had oh, live setup. Yeah. Split to, so yeah. basically, you know, I have, you know, for, especially for that tour, I really just had my bass going into my tuner and then, into the hx stomp and i have a separate or I, let me actually backtrack because i totally missed a big thing uh, <laughs> yeah. tuner, 
my tuner going into my Noble DI. Just that's just the clean tube DI sound. Yeah. Just really simple. If if like the front of house guy just literally just wants a safe bass sound, there you go. No effects, no nothing. You can just go out from there, and then mm -hmm. the quarter inch output goes into the Noble DI, and that goes into another DI box. So they have the both sounds and they can kind of run them together. And then on the tour, the DI box also went to the amp. So gotcha. a yeah. lot of times, like when I'm using that, the HX thump with an amp, I don't have the amp sim on, but you know, for me, one of my favorite overdrive sounds is a overdriven preamp. Mm -hmm. So I would use the B15 preamp side, get some really awesome drive from that and just send it to an amp. So it's not, you know, you can use this thing. So it's a Swiss. Yeah. Amp. You know, yeah, there are no rules. Is yeah, it's just like yeah. if it sounds, if it works, it sounds good. It's and the thing that I like about everything on this is like it's it's made like a brick. You know, when stagehands are throwing your pedal board everywhere, when they're you know knocking your like, and the other thing is too is like all the settings are are set into the software. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's not I don't, I'm not I'm not knocking you know knobs around and messing things up. It's just all enclosed in there in the software. Do you ever feel like you would use SVT Suite Live now that you have like your presets in it? You know, I actually am trying to figure out like, you know, how to basically how to do that. Cause I, I mean, I'm telling you, it's that just all of the, all of the amps in that suite, even like, as if you notice, like all my, all the presets that are, that I made that are in the package, like mm -hmm. I really do love utilizing, um, each of the different amps that are in there and that, you know, obviously the, you know, the big feature is the, the 50th, but you got the heritage, you got the SVT four pro, like all of those things sound so killer. Mm -hmm. And like, you can, you really can't make this thing sound bad. Like that was like my buddy who's like a mix engineer. He came over and I was showing him like, you know, this is kind of what I came up with and we're, messing around with the mic placements and the different mics and all that stuff. He's like, you know, you really just can't go wrong with anything here. It's like, it's really, it's going to be really hard for you to make this thing not sound good. You know? <laughs> That's it's, awesome. Is his biggest takeaway. What I like is that you're using the SVT DI as well. That's like, I little, do. That was actually my first tube DI. Little when hidden was, Yeah. When I was uh, just getting into like playing professionally and, mm -hmm. you know, when, when, you know, venues were like no bass players got to use a di and they just hand me a radial and i'm like no this is fine but it doesn't have any character to it, it just sounds right. like very sterile the first you know when i found out that ampeg made a tube di i instantly gravitated towards that and that was my workhorse for years until it unfortunately uh just crapped out for the final time and i had to i had to switch to a different different company but i loved the SVT tube tube DI and yeah. when, you, when that was in the suite, I was like, man, this is like all my old old favorites, just and just literally just in here. Yeah, that was our. I think it's still our most uh, asked about. Like, please bring back the SVT DI on uh, our excuse me on our idea scale. Um, yeah. So we knowing that we could at least include it in this. Um, you know, I can't say whether or not we're making a hardware version or not. Wink, wink. But. Um, I was, uh, we tried to get, uh, we just tried to get this out as soon as possible, knowing that it would be loved by people. So um, that, it's one of my favorite inclusions into the plugin. It's just yeah, it's that. a great little secret thing that, like, if, you know, it's just right there. And, if and, you, the, and, like the and, it's, egg. and it's, yeah, it's like a little Easter egg for, like, yeah. The, and if you're, you know, for those say, that know. if you want to just use that too, you can, you just like go to templates and, um, yeah, it's just there's one that yeah SVTDI only. So literally, if you wanted a separate track with like just this, mm -hmm. um, which a lot of people you know you're gonna double track anyway, have that DI track going. So now you just throw your DI through this to yeah. give it a little bit more life. I do that. I do like I'll I'll track Moog from my house as well. Like I'll send like a Moog pass that kind of complements a part mm -hmm. that I'm doing on electric bass. And man, I throw that I I throw the the SVT stuff on that Moog stuff, and it just that so, makes me so it happy. Just sounds, like, like, <laughs> you just, it just sounds so good. Because when we were using um, like in each of these presets for like per amp, I was really trying to make enough synth presets to where people would, yeah. you know, do exactly what you're doing. Yeah, it's just like 
it's just like, I love showing people that you can do more than what you think you can with, with these products is like, you can actually like use this for way more than you think. Mm -hmm. I, you know, throw keyboards, mugs, whatever, throw it in there. It sounds, it sounds incredible. Yeah. Just well, well, Jer but... Sorry, go ahead, Dino. No, I was just going to say, I'm wondering, you know, you guys were talking about, you know, being able to use this live. Would you consider, you know, if you're doing an in-studio session, bringing your laptop to the session with yeah, this? Yeah, I've actually been trying to, f I've been, I've been thinking about doing that. The last few like studio sessions I've done, I've actually just asked them to like, Hey, just send me, send me the tracks of my clean DI. I'm going to send you, uh, the same pass just with, you know, the SVT as like, here's a, here's an option. And okay. it's, it's been a great, like, I'll do that. Like they, they'll just send me a Dropbox and I'll just send it back to them. But it's definitely something where I'm like, I really think this is like, I, I, I honestly, I, I tell every engineer producer, I'm like, you guys got to get these. This thing is yeah. like, literally it's the best sounding amp sim that you can get in a plugin what's cool is we've had so many different artists um say uh basically they, they like exactly what you're saying we've been in different studios and like they'll be e emailing dino like crazy can you please like get this studio a license for svt suite because like yeah. I, need, I need to go in there and just do that and they love it they don't have to mic everything yeah i was gonna highlight this too like jeremy is saying you know, we've been talking about the B15 a lot. Will there be a B15 suite and will David be on there? Let's just put it this way. We've certainly been talking about it. If there is one, David will certainly be on there. Uh, and then Kurt, Kurt, I, a lot of great ideas um, on top of the B15 suite idea. Uh, Kirk had a cool idea of like an SVT suite pedal, uh, similar to the HX Stomp, but with SVT mm, suite. Not also, bad. also a killer idea. Maybe a killer update in the future or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Hmm. The hmm. Kirk update. Hmm. <laughs> you know, I know a guy. I feel you know like I feel like these people are throwing out some really killer ideas. I know. Maybe you should write those. We will write them down. <laughs> oh, yep. don't worry. <laughs> They're written down. Believe me. <laughs> you know, and I just knock at doors all day, and you're like, "Hey, what about this? Hey, what about this? Hey, yeah. can we do this?" Right? Yeah. Yeah, I have a couple ideas of things that you know, wink, wink. Yeah. yeah, no, David's had some killer ideas uh, that he's thrown my way and that are saved in a specific email folder. There you go. Which is uh, my trash. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. Hilarious joke. Well, yeah, I, I couldn't man. pass that up. Um, no, I just set you up for it. <laughs> yeah. So what do you, uh, what's what's the latest with, um, like, how, how are you, how's Nashville with COVID? I mean, I, I haven't been to Nashville in a few months, but it seemed fairly open for the most part. Yeah. Are, are there still a lot of shows going on. Yeah, it seems like things are, are pretty much like, you know, for the most part, there is some sense of like normalcy back here. I know it's not the same everywhere, but um, it's definitely feels like, you know, shows are shows are up and running and that which has been great because this whole town is operating off of, you know, 10 people that make 1099s. It's like yeah. everyone is, you know, it's the clubs, it's the restaurants, it's, you know, all the bands on Broadway just doing the four hour shifts night in and night out. Like it seems like, you know, for, you know, everyone, everyone, the, I would say the majority of people live in Nashville are, like I said, contractors, they're, you know, their jobs are all word of mouth. And it's good to see that like, it's, it's like getting back to where it was. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah. 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 Do you do do you do work on Broadway at all, David? I did when I first when I first moved here. I I, I did pay my dues on Broadway. I was yeah. playing uh, at Old Red, which is a yep. it's a newer um, it's a, one of the I think it's like Blake Shelton's mm -hmm. uh, bar and restaurant, which it's actually like really killer. I had never really uh, spent much time on Broadway playing, but like for that to be my entry into it, you know, learning you know, six hours of country yeah. covers and just like, you know, like I said, I, I, this is a great example of like, I actually don't, I've never really listened to country music. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for a lot of the older country songs, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I, as far as like what you expect to hear on Broadway, like I didn't know any of those songs. Yeah. Didn't know, I, I could, I could have sent the set list to any of my friends back home and they'd be like, Oh, I could do all of this. I, yeah. I, I legit was like, <laughs> I need to learn like, 
60 songs that I've never heard of. And, but like, I still challenged myself to do that. And it was a lot of fun. You know, it's, you know, I, uh, old red, it's got a killer Ampeg backline. That's cool. That's refreshing to hear. I feel like I'd be exactly the same way. I mean, I, like I grew up just being from Ohio here in country and listening to the country and would know it as, from a song standpoint, but not from a, I've spent all of these years cutting like my teeth on bass with it. Yeah. Needing, needing to know the, the, the meat and potatoes of the songs. I'm like, yeah, I don't, I got, I got a lot of work cut out for me. Yeah. But, uh, but you I know what? Like everyone's, everyone's got to spend some time in Broadway. Gotta I've heard famous. David live and he's incredible and he brings the funk and that's, that's all that matters. I try. Nice. <laughs> I, in fact, did you, you came from, did you come from Atlanta into Nashville? Is that right? Oh, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. originally, right. originally Charlotte, understand. North Carolina, and then uh, moved moved to Nashville like 2017, I think. Okay. So yeah, tell us a little about about your journey there. And you played with Elevation Worship, Lauren Daigle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what's uh, what's kind of your yeah. journey that got you into so Nashville? Basically, it was um, you know I was really involved with Elevation Worship pretty much straight out of basically straight out of high school like 19 years old wasn't quite sure if i wanted to go to college if i wanted to you know i knew i wanted to do music for the majority of my life and uh around the time like the the church was starting uh 2008 and i started getting pretty involved with the music team there and throughout the years of you know just playing with elevation on Sundays, like then, you know, they started growing, they started putting out albums, started doing tours. And from there, it kind of like opened up like, Oh, I think I really, really want to do this. Mm -hmm. And about 2016, 2017 elevation was doing a tour and um, we were opening up and then Lauren Daigle was uh, playing on that tour. And like, it was one of those kind of festival type shows where, you know, the, all the bands kind of intermingle and it, it was just felt like a big, you know, big happy family on tour mm -hmm. shared, like all the guys kind of shared green rooms and we're all like, you know, just talking and, you know, it's, it was really great. And it was around that time where Lauren Daigle's bass player, he was telling me that he was, this was going to be his last tour. He was going to be kind of moving on doing other things. And I was kind of telling him, kind of a similar story of like, you know, I've been really wanting to like potentially move to Nashville, really take my music serious, like kind of mm -hmm. really just, uh, just really just kind of go for it. You know, it's one of the things where it's like, how do you get involved with music? It's like, you know, it's, it's the easy and hard answer. It's like, mm -hmm. just go, just go where they're doing it, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and so he literally was like, well, I can't guarantee you anything, but you know, if you want to take over my position, I'll introduce you to Lauren's team and maybe this will get you, get you into Nashville. And what it was, amazing it, timing. It was crazy. It literally was the, it was like, he's like, yeah, you know, if you want to take this, like, you know, at the time Lauren was just finishing, finishing touring her first album. And, um, I kind of was in on the tail end of that. And then, um, moved to Nashville during her off season when she was kind of in the middle of recording her second album, which is what I did the majority of my touring with, which was, it was awesome, you know, going on, a, you know, coming from Charlotte where, you know, it, it was very limited on the music side of things. Just, it's just not a music city for the mm -hmm. most part. And then coming to Nashville, the artist you play with wins two Grammys starts getting into pop world and we're doing, you know, festivals doing Lollapalooza, you know, 2019 was like definitely the pinnacle pretty much when we started, you know, connecting a lot. It was like, that was where it felt like we were on a rocket ship. Yeah. You know, started, started 2019 playing Carnegie hall and then ending it in December, uh, playing in Hawaii. Like it just was like, that's incredible. It was like, I felt like, you know, after that year ended, I was like, man, I don't really know. Like I was trying to think of like bucket list things. I'm like, I feel like we kind of, I pretty much did most of them in one yeah. year. It's like, <laughs> it was actually kind of great. I was like, yeah, I think oh, this is great. You know, like yeah. name a venue and I think we played it and it was, it was a fun time. It was a roller coaster, but um, 
now being in Nashville, it's like, there are so many other opportunities. There's people, you know, there's, it, it was kind of nice to kind of just like come home and just get familiar with all the other uh, things going on in the music scene out here. Cause it's just, it's just, you know, everyone's a musician that lives out here. So there's always an opportunity yeah. to, you know, try other things. And it's been great to, you know, being home now, um, it's just great to get connected to other communities doing music. I love like the idea of like walking into a music situation and it's like, I'm going to be playing a new song I've never played before, or it's, you know, I just really love creating new music and it's just really fun that it's, uh, there is opportunities out here to do that. Mm -hmm. David, can you, can you tell us like, how did you break, how did you start to break into the studio scene in Nashville? Yeah, it's, uh, I would have to say like, um the big thing that really happened for me was um when i i had just moved here um probably i was only here for a couple months i was still just pretty familiar it was this it was a weird thing where it was like not many people can say that they moved to nashville and they already have a job waiting for them you know it's very it's very hard to do that so i was in this weird place of like weird that like I kind of already have a job here but like you know I'm kind of in this weird waiting season so I felt like I I had this like sense of like I can kind of you know I don't I'm not like a uh I don't like to hustle I don't like to you know I'm not the you know I don't like to do networking stuff that much I I just like to be myself you know I just like to connect with people and I felt it was kind of nice just being able to like not have that crazy pressure Mm -hmm. like I gotta know so many people here it's like no i'm actually more of a homebody i like being home um but it what was really great is uh when i moved here i had a lot of friends back home in charlotte they started coming out to nashville a lot started writing recording and uh you know as soon as they would come out here and record a song it'd be like hey you know david's out here like let's i want him to come be a part of my first album or stuff like that so Mm -hmm. it just kind of was this natural uh thing where the more of my friends would come out here to record, I get invited. I meet the producers. I meet all, all these other, you know, great players. And it's really just a, a incredible word of mouth community. It's, yeah. it's all relationship based. And, um, you know, a, a, a good buddy of mine told me just recently, like, you know, if you have to force a door open, you're going to have to, you're going to, you're going to be having to force it it to stay open. It's like, just let, let things come naturally to you. And yeah, you know, that way, yeah, he's, he's like, if you force the door open, you're going to have to keep it, keep it open as as long as you can. And that's just tiring. And so I I feel like it just was this natural, like, you know, situation. And it's, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's just all being there for people, relationships. And it just was, it's been great. It seems like you like with with all the with all the artists that we deal with in Nashville, especially bass players, you know, most mostly bass players from the Ampeg side of things. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, whenever you're talking to people working in Nashville, mm-hmm. um, it, it always seems like there were it, it, when they talk about what they're doing, whether it's studio or live work, it's like they're working with family. Mm-hmm. Not like, hey, I got called for this session, and then I've got this session and this. It's like, no, nah, man, I've been working with you know so and so producer. He's been, you know, we we go fishing together on Saturdays. Yeah, and, and you know, and he just happens to be a producer, and I happen to be a bass player, and mm-hmm. he called me for this work, sort of thing. And it's very it seems very organic mm-hmm. and, and natural, obviously. And you know, music kind of dictates that too. Yeah, that's a song right there, Dino. Yeah, that's fishing yeah. on Saturdays with my producer. Yeah, I go for motorcycle ride with my producer every Saturday too. <laughs> I like that one. I'll take that one. <laughs> well, it's like people kind of forget, like you know, yes, Nashville's got tons of you know musicians, yeah. artists, celebrities, whatever. But like you know, the touring schedule is like you know, you leave Wednesday night, you come back Monday, and yeah. it's just you know, by the time you get home or your weekends, like. Nashville for ever for all the people that are working it's like this is just also like my time to like relax decompress you know it can't always be it's just unsustainable for it to always be like work focused work focused right it's like yeah yes even the people I work with we just go hang you know yeah. we just go down downtown 
have a drink, just kind of relax, talk about other things. You know, it's just, yes. it's just how you keep a sustainable. That's how you, I mean, this job is just crazy. You know, just being in the music industry is like, what are we, you know, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> what are we doing? Yeah, like, what are we do? like, what are we doing here? This is crazy. You know, <laughs> just to like, just the type of jobs we have. And, and it's just nice to kind of like mm. unplug, not talk about it. It's just, create sustainability you know yeah just having the relational side of things yeah totally agreed yeah. and that in the lauren daigle band's a great hang i mean yeah you, know, you, you got to hang with us a, a lot like any, anytime you come into town i'm like i get the boys i'm like hey let's go hang out with dom like he's in town let's <laughs> let's go take you to get some some mai tais yeah that's great <laughs> freezing, mai tais in freezing cold weather that was a good yeah idea. yeah let's try the summer next time but it's good it's still fun <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's cool. Uh, speaking of the tour and those guys, um, and just seeing the shows, um, you played some incredible basses, like a, a very great yeah. variety. Oh, and I know that you were using HX Stomp to kind of like gain stage things. Oh yeah, that was a... into into the amp and everything. Um, do you mind showing us some of your basses that you were using? Yeah, and specifically that Greek show because we mm. were we were recording. I was, I went, I kind of went a little over the top. I, I brought a little more than I was going to, <laughs> um, but uh, it was, that was a good, yeah. Uh, that's another whole thing. Like, you know, with, with the, with the type of show that we had, um, I did, I, I, I had like a little pretty killer system of changing bases for certain songs. And it, it's not it, for those that don't know, you know, you see guitar players, you know, bass players swapping out guitars in between songs. Yep. It's it's not so much of like just oh look at them. You yeah, know. there's actually like a real, one now. Gonna, there's actually know. like a real util uh, like just there's there's a real reason for that. Whether it's like different tunings. Yeah. Um, it's you know because we we you know depending on the nights we might like change the set we might change the tuning uh, the the key of the song. To, like for it to flow better into the whatever the next one was it just is like some sometimes like it's just really good to like you know i don't have time you just gotta like keep going and like yeah. you know tyler and my tech would just literally throw me the next instrument I'd plug it in and the the hx stomp was great because i for that run i had a uh, basically i made a preset for every song and i dialed in the bass for that wow. specific thing so you know hit the next song i just literally just tap for the next preset and it's set to the proper volume gain stage for whatever the instrument is so you know this was for example this is like this is actually the first bass i bought uh moving to Nat moving to nashville i was like i gotta have like a old old bass this is a 59 uh precision it, it's kind of like the reissue is that true 59. no it's a it's a 59 it's uh, good I, shape I, well, yeah, it's got a crazy story to it. It's definitely, it, it'll, it's one of those bases that'll probably never be in a museum, but it's literally, it's just been taken care of for like, this is the like working musicians, like old base, you know, yeah. Clay yeah. Dots. Yeah. Yeah. it's, it's been refinished, you know, I put strap locks on it. Someone previously did the, did the holes, but it's literally, you know, these bases were made to be played and yeah. it's, it's still, you know, this thing sounds killer, but like using something like this and then, uh, actually at that show in, uh, in LA, we did the guys at Gretsch literally dropped off some white Falcons for that show. And it was another one of those things where it was like, I don't, I don't have time to sound check this. I'm just going to, Oh, there's um, no way I would not have played that. that thing. I was like, so yeah, this is, uh, let me go grab it. This is, uh, but what a different, what yeah, a different. So like when you switch from a P base and you switch, yeah. over, <laughs> switch over to this, like thing is gorgeous. there's no way this is going to sound anything remotely close to a fender or anything like that. And so, um, you know, this is one of those things where I just kind of plugged, plugged it in and, it sounded killer. I think I had just enough time in sound check to plug it in, get the gain staging right. So when I'm swapping over stuff, um, I can just hit a button and the levels are the same. 
Mm -hmm. You know, if there's certain EQ frequencies I need to do, I can already do that, you know, beforehand. And, mm -hmm. you know, the front of house engineer really, really loved me using the HX though. For yeah. even just for that specific thing, he was like, he's like, your levels are all matching. There's no crazy, you know, because it, it just was one of those shows where, like I said, we wanted to keep everything uh, as original as possible, where if this song needed to have like an old school Mustang sound, I used a Mustang, you know, yeah. if yeah. it needed this crazy hollow body, I used a hollow body. So utilizing the stomp to even just get gain stages right is incredible. It's a, one of the, you know, best tools that this thing can do. Even if you don't want to use the amps or the effects, if you could just, you know, even switching to an active instrument, mm -hmm. no yeah. problem. Yeah. What did you, what Stevie tune did you guys play? I forget. It was Sir Duke. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I always, I don't think I asked you this after the show and I meant to, but it was like, how long did it take you to memorize those runs? Cause. Oh man. It was <laughs> when, when, when Paul, the, uh, the drummer and the MD, when he was like, we're going to throw some old school tunes in here. It was like, Oh, you would pick that one. Wouldn't you? Yeah. You know, we yeah. Got, we, got a horn, we got a horn section, background vocals. He's like, yeah, we're going there. Yeah. It sounded incredible. It was, it was spot on. It was great. Yeah, it was, it was, that was a fun one to do. We had been doing that for a couple of years, you know, it just was nice, you know, doing festivals where, you know, I think a lot of Lauren's more popular songs are kind of more on the, you know, mid tempo ballads. It's like, well, when you're playing two o'clock in the summer, like you can't just, yeah. you can't just do, you know, these slow burns, you got to like hit them with some energy. And so we threw in those just for fun because we just, you know, just like to have fun. And yeah. um, it was awesome to be able to like do some of that. We did a uh, Curtis Mayfield move on up, um, added that into the set. And then um, when Johnny, Johnny swim was opening up for us for that, mm -hmm. uh, the world tour we did, they had, they kind of, they came out on stage with us and we did ain't no mountain with them. So that oh, was nice. like, Cool. That was yeah. like a fun, like, oh, that'd be so fun to play. Golly, man. They sounded so good on that song, but like, yeah, it's just like, it's just fun to like, you know, kind of like play music in a way that was done before. And you just realize mm -hmm. like how fun, how, you know, those things work then and they still work now. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a great point is like, yeah, those are hits for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it still hits. It, yeah. Yeah. Kirk, Kirk so, was asking. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, Kirk was asking about your HX stomp. Are you running that into the Noble DI for front of house? I can't. Yeah. So, like in in my years of using it, it's kind of based off of like what is certain. You can, you know, for a couple of years ago, I was just running the HX stomp into the Noble. Like if I only had, you know, you know, I try to I try to keep things simple for whatever I'm doing. You know, sure. if I have the opportunity to run a couple lines, I'll do that. If it's literally a throw and go and I don't, we don't have time to, you know, get everything sorted out. Like I will just throw the stomp straight into the noble, just mm -hmm. call it a day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Cause then what I can do is like, you know, I'll, I'll even make patches. If I'm just using one line, I have a patch for that. You know, if I'm splitting things out, I'll make a patch for that. But it's, you know, what's really great is using the, uh, the blocks where I can split yeah block so i'll have the clean and i'll have like the amp and effects so it's still like kind of summed together in yeah. a lot of ways so yeah. it's just you know it's whatever the gig calls for i'll do that just yeah. to keep it simple that's, that's a lot of work too actually i mean it's it not a, you know it's easy to do but it's just it, there's a lot of there's a lot of brain trust that go, goes into developing those blocks and the patches mm -hmm. and, you know okay well on this gig i'm going to need to split this line out to an amp versus this line out to a front out to a to a di and it does take yeah, intentionality cool. yeah, yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm a tinkerer i like tinkering with stuff and so i'll <laughs> i'll literally spend if i'm if i'm rehear like you know someone sends me songs to learn for a gig like i also spend i'll even set aside time being like how do i want my board to operate for this yeah. you know yeah. people spend time yeah. learning songs for something i also spend time like how can I set up my equipment? So it's like the, like foolproof yeah. you know, when I walk into yeah. that. So it's, for me, it's kind of a similar experience. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it, it, it's like any good craftsman, you know, they, they before they go out to a job, they're going to line up their tools in their toolbox. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to need this, 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 and that. Sort of yeah. Thing. Um, 
Jeremy's asking, uh, I think he's just making a statement, how faithfully, oh, how faithfully do you play that song? Because there's a lot of movement, so fun, but so crazy. Um, Jeremy, I'm assuming you're talking about Sir Duke or? Could I think be. so, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, the thing is, you like, this was drilled into me, like, so, so long ago. Anytime you're playing a cover or anything like that, you've got to respect what was there, you know? really in, in in the thing that i really tried to do was um just respect the baseline that was on the stevie tune you know really just tried to like keep it as faithful as possible and the thing that is really fun obviously when you play live there's going to be little nuances here and there but you know when you have 11 people on stage it's really important to be listening to everyone you know i think when we were playing live like I was very rarely listening to myself I was um, paying attention to what the singers were doing what vocal melodies are they doing what what are the because we had drums percussion guitar three singers three horn players um, you know a lot of moving parts and I think one thing that we tried to really do especially in those you know big songs with like lots of parts lots of movement you know got the horns blaring over here I really wanted to like uh, we just were listening to each other so well. And so, yeah, there might've been little nuances, but it was like, if we remain faithful to the song, remain faithful to how are we presenting the show on stage right now? Like that was our main goal, every single show. Mm -hmm. all, of, all of the crazy runs were definitely faithfully reproduced. I can yeah. vouch for <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, no, that's, that's totally nailed. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I'm I'm just uh, for the for the sake of my own because I for the life of me I can't remember who the bass player was on that I'm 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 desperately looking oh Nate uh, Nate Watts yeah Nate yeah. Watts was that yeah and did you play your 59 on that David I can't remember that night it? I think I did yeah, yeah. I di I didn't bring out my 59 for the for the tour but I for that run uh, I did because th literally that weekend you know we played two nights back to back at the Greek and then. Uh, we ended the run playing Red Rocks. So it was like, you know, this is kind of yeah. a really special weekend. I'm going to bring a couple of the couple of the ones out that I wouldn't normally play. Like they'll, they'll, they'll come along for the ride for this. That's wow. awesome. Speaking of, uh, we were talking about Ajax and presets and different bases. I kind of want to get into the, uh, go through your presets and get into like the mindset behind. Yeah. Love to do that. Actually, yeah. I'm even going to go on my computer right here and, uh, pop open my sorry about that i thought i had do not disturb on that's all. It's dino disturb mm. yeah it's dino disturb <laughs> so yeah do you, do you have yours up if like will it route oh. the audio to, uh, to hear you through it or no, maybe not remember i didn't do that cool thing i said i was gonna do no oh, no no worries man <laughs> this is i should have <laughs> you know i don't have the cool microphone and stuff set up on mine just yet um yeah well, let's go through it on yours yeah i just have it up here for me just so i i have a i mean i could look at your screen too it's right there so yeah, we got we got the the dream rig this is your first listed one with the 50th and it i is. love that you're jumping it Yes, that's something that I, I love doing live. And that and kind of the dream rig was like, you know, that was that's kind of similar to how I ran it live on the on the world tour uh, when we were kind of demoing out the kind of testing the amp. I you know, I really tried to I found old photos of screenshots of you know how I had it set on stage and uh -huh. you know um it's really close to how I ran it live and it's just jumping both channels and like blending them accordingly. Again, it's similar to what I do when I record for my house. I have a, um, HX amp line. I have an SVT preset amp line and I kind of just, in, in a lot of ways I jump those together and just kind of yeah. tinker around where I can get some really cool, um, you know, sounds using those, but I love, I'm a I like that you're, you're taking tons of the mid range, that like mid grit from the 69 channel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, boosting highs and lows on the um, 75 channel. That's really cool. Well, it's utilizing both their strengths. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the 69 channel had this amazing grit to it. It's like, let's really utilize that sound. Mm -hmm. And then, like, 
the seven, the mid seventies one has got this incredible headroom, this, like, just this contrast of this, you know, obviously like, you know, when they release that model, it's like, Oh, we have, you know, more room to do things now. And so I'm really utilizing the, just the, uh, the headroom of that channel, just kind of mm -hmm. really blending them together, just finding that secret yeah. sauce. Yeah. That's cool. And That's then in terms of, I know these pedals are all bypassed. Is there like kind of like a go-to that you if use? I, so, I, I, so basically I keep them bypassed at first because mm -hmm. for at least for this channel, because um, mm -hmm. this is the, that's the, when I'm recording from my house, I just turn, I just turn on the SVT suite and just go straight to that preset. So that's like, oh, that's cool. basically yeah. the dream rig is like, this is my starting point is like yeah. from here. And then I will say, cool. Do I want to compress it a little bit? I really love the scrambler. If I yeah, want to get cool, some it's a cool, different grit than like the amp grit. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll check out the, the first three for this patch, the first mm -hmm. three, the first three pedals, the basically the octave, the compressor, the scrambler, I'll kind of tinker around with those. If I feel like I want to get a little extra something from there. Um, if I want to utilize the course or the phaser, I actually use a completely separate preset for those things. Just because gotcha. I feel like I love using the full spectrum of this. Suite. Yeah. It's just, here, I got it. Pulled and up. just for, for those watching, you can actually reorder. Yeah. You can, yeah, I, I encourage cool. people, even for people that get my presets for the stomp, I'm like, I want these to be your templates. Mm -hmm. If you want to tweak some things, like I love things being tweakable. And the fact that you can reorder everything, even in this suite, it's like, it's it's it just was incredibly well designed sweet hey, dom i have a question here yep. and when you're running pedals like you're running your signal chain however you want to run it on the 50th can you assign and i haven't tried this yet can you assign which pedals go into which channels on the 50th now that is a great feature ad that we could we could yeah. add to that yeah it's really okay. cool. Yeah, what you would do is like essentially set up a separate track with it and, yeah. and like route them that way. But yeah, hmm. that, that's okay. really cool. Yeah. If you would like assign this to channel A. I was just thinking, you know, as more and more guys want to start using this in a live situation, that might mm -hmm. be yeah. useful. You know? Write that down. I, I, I way ahead <laughs> we of you. Got, we got all <laughs> pen and papers already out. And the only other thing I was going to ask you, David, do you actually have a scrambler pedal? I do not. I'm writing that down too. There you go, right? <laughs> He's he knows I, a guy. Yeah, you know, know, do you, know, guy. Do you, know, you know a guy. I know a guy. Yeah, I love I love the 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 thing that I love about the scrambler is like, you know, it's just what's unique about it is you got your treble on it, the blend, the drive. Like, it's just really nice that it's like, um, it really because that's again it goes back to like what my favorite, what are my favorite overdrive? People always ask me, what's your favorite overdrive? You know, it's the classic, yeah. it's the classic gear question with like musicians. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's your favorite overdrive pedal? I'm like, honestly, an overdriven amp is my favorite overdrive yeah. pedal. Yeah. And it's like, that's what it's emulating. It's like yeah. all of these little pedals are emulating the sound of an amp distorting in some capacity. Right. And what I feel like the scrambler does really well is it, it really does it. It's like it, it, it accomplishes what I like, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, yeah. and that's why in the, you know, in the stomp, I'll use the scrambler. I'll use an actual, I'll throw in a preamp, a B15 preamp in one of the blocks and just like, you know, no, no actual amp or uh, cab, but I'll just throw the preamp section in there and just crank it out it. Yeah. and just get that really great tube sound. Mm -hmm. um, mostly because it reminds me of, you know, my very first Ampeg amp I ever purchased. It was a, old b18 flip top oh wow yeah i found it at sam ash it was like 800 That's bucks awesome. it yeah. didn't it didn't really work um <laughs> it, it, it was from like the you know late 60s but the first time i in it in the power um it didn't have a ground on it so depending on where you plugged it in like it would it, you pick up a guitar plug it in it totally shock you it was like <laughs> it was one of those things where they're like you can 
they're like, we can swap out the cable and put a ground on it. I'm like, you know, that's kind of the character of this amp is it, it'll, it'll kind of give you a little shock every now and then. But, <laughs> but you know you're alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the thing is like that amp had such a great, you know, it didn't take much for that amp to, it was only like 50 Watts. Yeah. You, you just maybe pushed it past for like, uh, you know, get to noon starts getting a little hairy sounding and you start, you know, it just starts getting that really warm, you know, overdrive sound, just a natural sound. And that was always my favorite and finding those pedals that can kind of do that really well is what I always gravitate towards. So I love, love the scrambler. Um, anyway, that's enough about no, that's me, awesome. me, me getting, I, I me getting I shocked. I tracked you guys. <laughs> no. Yeah. In terms of the back, Keeping it. Oh, I like this. I like that it's on tight. It's not on. So these are all the uh, power amp settings that you can kind of uh, mm -hmm. manipulate. And we have these starting points. And David's choos choosing tight. And then the second that you change anything, uh, it goes to user. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there we go. And um, you can save that within the preset of your custom setting. So yeah. yeah. And I'm not gonna lie. Like for these people that are like looking at this this SVT suite, they might not know all. You know, for a lot of people that might be even just new to using plugins, like I'm not a genius with this stuff. A lot of times, like, you know, it's the, the fun thing is like tinkering with it. It's like mm -hmm. you might not even know what the SAG does. You know, you might not know that it's, you know, it's it's like, you know, it's the, e the easiest way to describe it is like, you know, the sound of a, a pedal that uses a nine volt. And like as the nine volt dies, it, you know, the set like it just kind of starts sounding like this old unique thing. and. Mm -hmm. um you know but it's just like just mess around with it see yeah. you know do the extremes of, of you know turn it all the way up turn it all the way down yeah. like it's sometimes the best way to learn something is just literally just get your hands on it and figure it out um you know because i'm not the most educated when it comes to you know how an amp operates the how the back controls but like i really just try to listen to like is it doing what i want and if i if it if there's a part of it that isn't, I'm going to figure out what it is. So I have a better understanding of it. Yeah. This is like flight simulator for your amp. You can't really it, blow it up. It you're... literally, it, <laughs> and that's the, that's the best thing about it is this thing's, this thing's all digital. So you mess around with it all you want. It, you know, don't do it on a real amp, but do it on this. <laughs> yeah. Don't do this on a real amp. There yeah. You go. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't just, yeah. I, to, to that's me, cool. It's it, to me, it's like, it's, it's like video games for bass players. Yeah, <laughs> tinker with stuff all day long. Yeah, it's true. We even thought about um, modeling the fan noise, but we ended up leaving <laughs> oh that out. Oh my gosh, that would be incredible! <laughs> um, but you can add some sixty cycle hum in there, just in case you want. Just in case you want a little bit. You of want that, that B eighteen sound? Just, just in case you want that. Just in case you want that beer cooler sound coming through your bass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the ice machine. Yeah. It's nostalgic, is what it is. That's <laughs> right. A little dose of nostalgia. That's yeah, awesome. So we get into these this uh the cabs of the dream rig. So you mm -hmm. got the OG square back eight ten. God, I love that thing. Isn't that is that modeled off for yours? Is that what that is? That that was it wasn't mine. I didn't have a uh, original uh Guy Seifert is uh this awesome player in LA and he lent us his um he's got like all this really, really cool vintage Ampeg gear. And one mm -hmm. of the things that he had was a original square back Golly. from I think the late sixties or something. And yeah, yeah, he uh just literally was like, Yeah, have at it, do what you need to do and just send it back when you can. So You're thank like, you guy. Yeah, yes, I will. I will do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's got this incredible low end. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, even even with the the cab section, again, this is another thing where uh even if you don't quite know about different microphones, what they all do, placements. It's like, it's still, it, it's, it's the way it's designed. It's so, it's so foolproof. Like you really can't mess this up either. You know? Yeah. It's just um, uh, trial and error really. Yeah. It's just like, if you like how it sounds, you know, go with that. You know, I, to me, I was just tinkering around with like, I love con like, again, jumping channels. I love utilizing. If you're going to give me, uh, an ability to use two cabs, I'm going to use two cabs. Yep. Like how, how do we, <laughs> you know, how do we get these? Like th these are my two favorite cabs, the 15 inch and an 810 mm -hmm. for their own different reasons. Yep. The punchiness of the 810 is like, you can't beat a punchy 
like 10 inch speaker. Mm -hmm. And for me, like just the full spectrum of the 15 inch, you know, it's like that, that's also my favorite. Like people ask me my favorite amps. I'm like, you know, both of these are my favorite, like amp and speaker combinations. So using these to their, using their strengths and putting them together. It's like, I just love messing around with that. And the thought of like actually micing these up in your house at the volume that you would want to track at. Oh, my wife would hate me. (laughs) Yeah. It's pretty awesome that you don't have to. Amps aside, just the cost of some of the microphones that are in the suite. Yeah, Mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, totally. Just having like, you know, the RE20, it's, you know, one of my favorite, just, it's like, it's like the point and click mic. It's like, just yeah. point it, point it, point it like on, like near the cone. And it's like, again, really hard to mess that up and so just seeing even just like auditioning position is really cool to figure Mm -hmm. out what is the sweet spot for you individually as a player Mm -hmm. because there's no wrong answer it's no it's it's just like it's gonna change and the thing that's so great is it's adaptable to how you play you know if i play pretty light you know the cap's gonna be pretty smooth the the amp the the tone itself isn't gonna be as aggressive um, if i'm playing pretty pretty light and as i dig in Again, it's very responsive to yeah. how I physically play. And I think that's something that is really cool that we can do that with technology these days where it doesn't just sound like, um, you know, this, it's like, you know, if you don't have, like, I think in years past, like there wasn't as much responsiveness as there is today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think that's why in previous years, people were like, no, oh, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use this thing. And it's like, well, this does it even better because now you have it just on your computer. You don't Mm -hmm. have to lug it upstairs. You don't have to accidentally drop it out of your car when you're trying to load in (laughs) and it's a million pieces. You know, it's like, you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's all, it's all there. It's responsive and you can save it to how you prefer it. And it's just, it's really, even, even if there's a certain, you know, magic in a specific uh, cabinet Ampeg or non Ampeg that you want to put in here, uh, you can capture that yourself or, you know, yeah. get in, impulse the, I, the IR section. If you want yeah. your own cab, there you go. Throw it yeah. in. Yeah. I got some good ones in here. Um, cool. Let's move on to the driven base, mm-hmm. which I think I can understand your mindset behind this by the title. Yeah. Just like rock. Give me, if I just want rock and roll. You know, yeah. I literally just had like, you know, when I was looking at this cab or this head cab, I was like, I just want like, just just picturing myself just like literally plugging a bass into SVT. Just I'm playing a rock show, no tuner, no nothing, just P bass into SVT. Let's go. It's like, that was my um, mindset behind this was sometimes you just need like just rock and roll bass, Mm -hmm. you know, because that has its own unique sound to it. And just, there's something really special about the 212 with rock that I yeah. even just in the last year or two have really gotten into. It's just like a really cool low mid thing going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that in this, actually this specific 212 is what I used uh, on that tour and definitely fell in love with it. And seeing it here, I was like, oh, I got to utilize this thing. You know, I'm just picturing like, you know, playing in a smoky bar and just playing loud music. Like this is, this is like my setup for that. And Again, what's really cool about this, the, like the suite is like, you know, when you're trying to dial in your amp sounds, you can literally just cycle through them without having yeah. to change too much. Just a click of a button. How does this sound? Yeah. Okay, cool. Like, let me try the other one. Can we A, B them? You know, just mm-hmm. without having to do too much. It's all right there. Yeah, that's cool. I love that you're using the 4 Pro. With the, is this for the Falcon? It mostly? is. For the, I, I, yes. So I modeled that sound using, uh, using this Falcon. I was like, oh, wow. What's really cool is, you know, um, it just, it just was like, you know, when I'm, you know, and that's the thing is like, I, those are, this isn't just me like making things and just throwing them on there for the sake of having them on there. Like a lot of this was due to, you know, in the trial phase of this suite when we were kind of tinkering around with it, figuring out how, like, you know, we're demoing it, we're figuring out, how we want to use it. Like I was recording sessions at the time and, you know, if I had a song where I'm using this bass, I I would, you know, I legit was like, cool. I actually do want to make 
something that I just plug this in sounds great. And again, I wanted to have a, like, at least as far as the, as far as my folder is concerned, I wanted to, you know, have a good example of like, here's a little bit of everything, you know, mm -hmm. here's, yeah. here's the 50th, here's the heritage. Here's something that I feel like works for the four, you know, it just was really cool to like have a full spectrum of like, you know, using this thing to its max capacity. And I just love for the SVT four. I just love like all of the options that this thing has, you know, I remember yeah. being like 13 years old, going into guitar center, you know, plugging into this exact amp and just being blown away at all the things you could do with this, you know? And, um, with hollow bodies, they're so temperamental, you know, you just, you, you know, playing them live in the studio, like they have this really cool sound, but they can be so, you know, they have a little bit of, a little bit of sass to them sometimes. Like maybe they don't, <laughs> yeah. maybe they don't like how that overdrive sounds and there's like crazy weird, you know, feedback or stuff like that. But that's why I love the four is you could, you know, be super specific on the frequencies that you want to either bring more into the fold or take some out like that's why i was like well you got to do the got to do the svt4 for this love that and then yeah two square backs love that, that oh cool. yeah yeah and so the short scale um is literally model i was again this was one of the bases i used on the road with lauren it's just the jmj mustang love the jmj it's just yeah. golly man they nailed it you know just great the, the, you know thicker neck on it i just um short scale thump i was like you know it's you know everyone loves short scales these days and just really utilizing like how to get a massive sound out of like a you know smaller smaller instrument flat wounds just getting that real, real warm, but just massive sound. I was like, gotta, gotta do that. Yeah. I didn't mean to jump ahead, but, uh, no, no, I, that's great. Um, oh yeah. Back to the hollow body, the two square backs. Yeah. Just big, massive, big, massive. I sound. like that you use a lot of room sound too there. I yeah, love using well, the room. I, I do too. You know, like that's my favorite thing about, you know, being in a studio tracking with amps you're going to hear the room, you know, Yeah. you're going to like to, for it to feel, you know, like I just love feeling like there is an amp behind me somewhere, just capturing mm -hmm. bits and pieces of the room. Like, I just feel like it's, you know, even like I said, on the presets, I try to throw in, I, I try to maybe move the mic back a little bit, maybe add mm -hmm. a little bit of room verb, just enough where it feels like, um, you know, because like I said, you're tracking in a studio where you have a DI sound and you ha you're using an amp. Um, you're going to hear that little contrast between a direct bass sound and then a room that has, you know, a bass amp with a mic where you kind of hear the air a little mm -hmm. bit. It's kind of nice having that contrast of very direct and then some airiness. Right. Love that. Well, I, your presets are some of my favorite in the in the suite. I love they, they really are really great templates like you just go right to it Thank everything's you. right there yeah, yeah. especially I mean, on the honestly i mean honestly i just i mean i love it. all these guys justin's roy's uh Ava's. the way um it's you describe the the room sound reminds me of tim lefave's um which one is it it's the feels like a concert i'm pretty sure he yeah he has yeah. this one pretty great and it's, it's really cool yeah there's something about like, just, you know, don't be afraid of like, oh, I know, I think, I think <laughs> some people maybe think like having room noise or like having some like room verb makes it too muddy, but it's like, no, when you have it paired with a very direct signal, it, it really blends really well. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like peanut butter and jelly, you know? That's it right. Pairs well. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Love food references when it yep. comes to bass. Those are two, two of my favorite things. So you yeah. can't go wrong. You know, the one thing I, after hearing you guys talk about this and, and this thought dawned on me, and I think it's pretty important to touch on, you know, Dom, you're a producer, David, you're a producer. Um, I don't fancy myself as much of a producer. I just do my stuff here. But one of the things that I thought about is 
you know, as bass players, you know, I mean, we're all working bass players. We're used to showing up with a rig, playing the gig, packing up, going home, Uh the occasional session. Or if you're, you know, if you're doing a lot of sessions, you show up at the studio, the engineer gets your sound here, plug in here. Uh And and as bass players, we're just kind of like utilitarian guys that show up with a couple of instruments and and make stuff go boom, boom. Yeah. You know, (laughs) but the tool that this suite gives to bass players not not only is it a tool for bass players to like be able to record stuff at home and 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 be able to do home sessions and and, and you know do better sessions and make better mm-hmm. bass sounds mm-hmm. i think the real valuable tool about this is it allows guys like myself to to start to experiment and get into the engineering side of not just being a bass player. Totally. I'm not just going to show up and you're going to put the mic here and, oh, what kind of mic? Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And it it allows us to, oh, this is what a 414 sounds like off an A10 cab. You guys start talking about off axis and on axis or room mic versus direct mic. You know, for, for, for somebody like myself to go out and buy all that stuff, to experiment here in the home studio, it's going to cost me thousands and thousands of dollars. Like anybody yeah, mm-hmm. and a lot and, of time. And yeah, it, yeah maybe time you just don't have. Like, yeah. I mean, hearing, like I said, hearing you guys talk about your presets, that's like it totally, my wheel started spinning. It's like it, this isn't, this is a great tool for a bass player and any musician to start to get behind the desk and, and learn miking techniques and, and mm-hmm. certain mics. And so, man, th- Kudos to you guys for 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 bringing that out. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you guys work with this all the time. So thank you for 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 showing that. Yeah, and I th- I think too as musicians, like sometimes we can get like a little tunnel vision with like what we're doing, and yeah. it kind of goes back to like uh, what I was saying about playing on stage with like eleven people. If I had tunnel vision, man, we would not sound good. If all of us just had tunnel vision, we just were we we just sound too robotic. You yeah. know. Or just we'd be overplaying or stepping on each other's toes. But like, and I think in the same way, like on the educational side of like recording bass or, or capturing sounds, like we can just get tunnel vision on just like, I only, I just care about, you know, my parts. But yeah. like with this, like you said, with this, with the suite, like it actually gives you um, absolute freedom to learn like, how to capture things you know yeah. what what different mics like you just click a button you got like 15 different microphones that yeah. are just sitting right there and if you were to buy those you know that'd be thousands and thousands of dollars and just like and there's and the thing is like there's no repercussions to like just messing around with stuff yeah. if you don't if, yeah. if you don't like it you know just go back to the default to how yeah. it was set before and it's mm-hmm. it's really it, like you said it's like flight simulator it's just it, it just kind of like gives you this ability to kind of like understand what's happening, you know, when you do go into a session and they're miking certain things and just you having a little bit of that knowledge of like, Oh, that's cool. Like they're using the same mic that is on my preset, maybe, you know, or they're using a different mic that's, that's in the suite. Maybe I'll switch that, see how that sounds like. Yeah. It keeps people in a constant state of like being a student, which I think is really important doesn't yeah. you know just always wanting to learn something new even for me like i'm trying to figure out like i just switched to pro tools i've never never been a pro tools guy but i just switched to it because everyone you know i don't know everyone uses it here and mm-hmm. so i'm like i'm gonna learn a new doll and it's been it's been great just always being a student you know yeah that's been a yeah. recurring theme i think with almost every artist we've had on an svt mm-hmm. time or a sweet talk is that everyone is like you got to get back to that humility as a student or as a learner or that childlike wonder mm-hmm. and just like dig in again and just find new ways to kind of reset that mindset. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what, that's how we got, you know, to even playing music is because it, it mm-hmm. was such a, such a mystery to us. You know, I, I kind of think back at the times where I'm like, what was it? How, like, how was I playing before I knew the scales when I didn't know what every single note was? It was almost more exciting because I'm, I'm learning, you know, something. And, and sometimes when you feel like you know too much of something, it you kind of lose that, uh, yeah. 
creativity. So uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll throw in some things just to be, you know, throw some new things my way just to kind of keep going back to that time of like, I'm, I still want to be a student learning something. Yeah. 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 What's um? I know we're kind of getting, getting out of time here. What, um, where can people go to find your presets on, on yeah. HX Stomp? You can, um, basically, uh, I have a website. It's davidcurran.co, C-O. Dot co, okay. Do not. We'll put that David, in the chat. davidcurran.com. If you want to get really cool photo, wedding photos of lighthouses, go to David. Oh, Curran. nice. It's, uh, <laughs> you should check it out. It's, uh, um, I guess this guy has the domain name davidcurran.com and he's probably had it since, I don't know, 95. Yeah. It hasn't changed a bit. I've been trying to like get that <laughs> domain name and it just never works. <laughs> it's amazing. But at that's cool, man. Co, that is where you can find, um, you can send me an email, check out the albums I've played on little video clips here and there. It's a, just a, just, a, I've always wanted to have like, just like a, here's a spot. Here's some real estate on the internet where mm -hmm. yep. like every, if you want to know what I've played on, what I've done, it's right here. Yeah. Know. And you're, no, that's you great. Also, I, I maybe worked also, hard on that. I was going to say, you also have a pretty, uh, a pretty comprehensive YouTube channel as well. I do. Oh. Yeah. I'm trying to get back to that's how, that's actually how I started is people used to send the, ask me questions of like, how do you play, um, you know, how do you play this song? And I would literally just make a video on YouTube and, um, just post it on there, send them, send them the link. Cause at the time I was like, how do I send them a five minute long video of me playing bass? I was like, Oh, I'll just send them a YouTube link. And so, right. um, I'm definitely wanting to get back to, um, you know, I post a lot of videos on my Instagram page as well. And I've been transitioning to like put those Instagram videos on my YouTube as well. And just try to, I, I try to be avail as available as I can be to people, you know, yeah. growing up, it, it felt impossible to get a hold of musicians that inspired me. So if there's someone that uh, looks up to what I do, I really try to, you know, bridge the gap and be like, Hey, you can, you know, send me a DM email. I will get back to you. you That's know? Cool. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man, David, it's been the learning experience for one thing for me. It's always a learning experience mm -hmm. for me here, but thank you for coming on. This Yo, thank you guys for having me. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah. Yeah, and thank no. you for all your past contributions to Ampeg as well. Yeah, man. Really, yeah. really, man. Be, be, past, past, yeah. and hopefully future. Yes, exactly. absolutely. Exactly. Actually, speaking of that, like, what, what's 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 next for you for for playing? Are you going out on the road soon, or? Um, I have a couple fun things that are in the works. I don't know if I can say what they are. I don't, you know, no one's told me no. I can't. But um, <laughs> uh, there's the, the there's definitely some shows coming up in January that I'm really excited about. They're, they're cool. local, but it's. Um, with some artists that I've never uh, worked with in the past, but I'm really excited to, you know, see where that goes. I'm just really excited just to be home, yeah. playing with artists around town, um, working with people remotely. It's just, I, I'm kind of like, I just love all of it. You know, it's fun making new music with people. That's killer. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Well, you're, you're always welcome here, man. And, and hopefully we'll, you know, when you get back out, we'll have you back on and, mm -hmm. You know, we'll have a whole new bunch of stuff to talk about. Oh, I can't, I can't wait. Yes. I you can't know. wait to find out. Um, uh, I want to thank our, our viewers, everybody that's been watching and, and yeah. chiming in and commenting in. And it's been a great exchange amongst everybody watching in, too. So so I want to thank everybody there, too. Yeah, thank you for all the questions. Um, I know uh, we're taking some time off. Uh, our next SVT time, and it'll actually be another SVT suite. Uh, or excuse me, another sweet talk with Eva Gardner on oh, January thirteenth, awesome. uh, because obviously Eva was one of the contributors to the mm -hmm. suite as well. So we want to kind of get her brain share on this too. So uh, January thirteenth, be sure to be sure to tune in. And uh, man, thank you everybody, and uh, happy holidays, happy New Year, stay safe, stay healthy, and and we'll see you next year. Yes. Yep. Cool. See you soon. See you guys. <laughs> it's the post news like yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's